Okay, so uh, back of the Irish Independent, Mora's Dutch Courage. Um, Hattrick Hero Engineer, stunning comeback to set up Liverpool final. Football needs a tier two, Evans. So this is uh, John Evans, the Wicklow manager, talking about football needing a tier two and how it's difficult for him to generate enough um, interest, really, amongst the Wicklow GAA population to get the best players to turn out for the county. McElroy not expected in the hinge despite tour return, so Roy McElroy signed up for a European tour so that he can start amassing points, and then Leinster won't let themselves be bullied by Saracens like Munster did, says uh, Neil Francis. Just in case you missed the dig. It's kind of like people comparing uh, Liverpool to Manchester United, like Phil Thompson yesterday, in, in, in a big hurry. Nothing wrong with it, but uh, there's... Uh, or maybe, maybe it adds to the joy you get for the instant comparison you make between your own success and uh, somebody it, else's It does, doesn't it? But, uh, depends on your outlook. We, we really. would never know anything about this. Like, I mean, I'm sure John is still laughing at his Unai Emery gag there a couple of moments ago. I guess it does add to the whole sweetness of it all. It cut you to the quick, didn't it? I'm, st I'm still bent over from that, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the Irish Examiner sports section leads with more the merrier. Hattrick Hero's 96-minute winner sends Spurs into Champions League final. Tommy Martin is writing, Coo Cullen had no puckout strategy, but Hurling's myths endure. Uh, Brian Gavin's got a column as well, saying we're not helping refs and it'll hurt Hurling. Uh, Fear we go then, opposition running scared of Reds again, says Virgil van Dijk. The build-up to this Champions League final is going to be something else over the next couple of weeks. So, um, the back page of the sun, you couldn't make it up. I mean, fair play to that's the level of like, look, we've got no headline for you today. We just uh, we just can't do it. This this doesn't. There is no headline that would do justice to this. Uh, IX two Tottenham three. Lucas Hattrick as Poch heroes duel Liverpool. Hey, but it's I, I definitely think Spursy should stop meaning being four 0 up at Man United and losing six four. Uh, it's really over, Bale. Real Madrid are ready to freeze out Gareth Bale and dump him in the under 23s unless he finds a new club. I would happily play with the under 23s for 400 grand a week or whatever it is he's on. I'd be like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start eating ice cream, I'm going to start playing PlayStation, and I'm going to just like not pay any attention to the under-23 coach. Because let's face it, what are you going to do? It's a, a, Have a fully guaranteed contract, screw you. It's a fantastical way of life. I'd like to think that Gareth Bale has got to where he is by having a mindset that's a little bit different to your mindset, though. Yeah, but he's at the end of his career now. It's like, And it's 400 grand a week. He's got to, he's got to the point where he did use all of his... Guile, athleticism, hardcore winning mentality to get to this point right now. But now he's there. Now he's reached the top of the mountain. Okay. And he can relax and the rest of his life is going to be, I've got 27, 30, 45, 55 million quid in my bank. Let's forget everything that's happened over the, the course of the league season this season and Gareth Bale's year. Let's pretend he is still at the level he was in the Champions League final last year. He's probably not too far off. He could probably get back to that level. Where he was a sub. Go on. Well, he won the game. He won the game for Real Madrid. He's a sub off the bench. If money is no object, do Tottenham Hotspur bring him back? Oh no, no, next, no, no, this no, summer. no, no, no! That's a that's a Manchester United signing. It, it, no, it is a Manchester United signing. Too expensive, but, not that interesting yeah. football anymore. Like it's Alexis Sanchez Mark II. But no, I, I'm taking away the too expensive element. Save money is no object, so you don't have to pay him half a million a week. On a, on a purely footballing level, would Maurizio Pochettino say this is the right footballing move for this team? This team that are You're really asking me would would Spurs sign a world class player? That's a, like well, the, but in this uh, case, is, is it specifically Gareth Bale? Because you can't Gareth ignore Bell. so you can't ignore the injury history. You can't ignore yeah. the fact that he hasn't played football properly for a year in a meaningful fashion. Like he's a really good footballer. Of course, Spurs should be interested in him if you were getting good Gareth Bale. But if you're getting Gareth Bale, who has made it and has decided that my body aches, I don't really deserve to be kicked anymore. I'm so rich, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Which would you do? Well, what are you going to do? Well, that, that's the question. That, that is the, the conflict that you would have. And you kind of look at what happened last night in Amsterdam and say, I don't think that squad needs that right now. A couple of weeks ago, I was like, definitely, it would be a, a fantastic kind of poetic signing to bring him back to, to Spurs, but I'm not so sure anymore. Uh, the Irish Times leads with Ajax left shell-shocked as Moore leads stunning Spurs fight back. Uh, Mary Hannigan says Twilight Zone stuff has Tottenham complete mission impossible. A couple of previews then for the Europa League tonight. Could we have an all-English final in that as well? Uh, transfer ban will stop Chelsea competing for titles, says Sarri. They're up against Eintracht Frankfurt. It is one all. And Emery urges Arsenal to focus on chance for silverware. Uh, Arsenal goes to Mestaya 3-1 up. Could it, could it could be on 35 million a year? Could that be right? Well, including endorsements. Could it? Is that your right? Is that? No, that's, he's on 400 grand a week. Well, I, just, I made that 400 grand a week figure up. He could be on more. No. That could be netto as well. Who knows? Yeah, so earnings $34 million, according to Forbes. So he doesn't need to come back to the Premier League. He's like, he's 29. He's got, he's got mountains to climb, actual mountains, you know. 
from his Ma- like, mountains of ice cream to eat before his under-23s game. Uh, more of the same. Hatrick hero Lucas Moore after his late winner. Uh, as somebody said, um, how he didn't pull his shirt off after scoring that third goal should be a, a, a review from Harvard Business Review, or it should be a, an investigation by Harvard. Like, what? How did you not pull your shirt off? Like, well, what do you do when you've just scored this? I don't know. I don't know how to celebrate this. Uh, how ball boys help beat Barca. This is the... Um, Oh, we need a new angle on the Liverpool story, but it was on. It was all over the internet yesterday. No. Yeah, it's uh, well. The, the the ball boy thing has got an, an interesting element as well, because well, they the, the Liverpool management realised that every time Barcelona had a free given against them in the new camp, they would get frustrated, they would get petty, they would get childish, and they would turn to the referee and complain. Which is obviously a tactic for Barcelona because if you complain enough, the referee will start to believe that they might be making the wrong decision. And Liverpool were like, we can actually take advantage of this. They are not alive at set pieces quite a bit. Let's make sure our ball boys are alive. And uh, so approved. Back page of the Irish Steady Star is another Moracle. Potch and tears as Spurs copy cop to book final showdown. And on verge of greatness, says the headline on the afterglow of the Liverpool win against Barcelona. One more a miracle. Another day, yet another incredible, unbelievable and spectacular comeback as Lucas fires Spurs into all England showdown. It's mad, isn't it, that Brexit is happening against the backdrop of, like, you know, this. Well, England conquering Europe may be a, a metaphor that pro-Brexiteers could actually use to their favour, as Theresa May did literally yesterday, comparing herself to Liverpool. Tory Prime Minister compares herself to Liverpool. Mm. Didn't exactly work. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't. I don't think it, it had the desired effect. Twenty-five million Herrera to PSG, but Martial is staying. So Andrew Herrera has agreed a twenty-five million contract with Paris Saint-Germain to begin this summer clear out of Manchester United. That's twenty-five million quid for him. Um, but it, is, is that is that not? But my maths have, have my maths have gone bad. He's only getting twenty-five million quid. So is that three years? He's getting eight million a year. Are footballers not getting paid more than that these days? I'm just going to whip out my calculator here. Sorry, I'm not on my phone. While you're doing that, I'm going to go to the Herald. And Hatrick Hero Mora takes Ajax to cleaners is the headline on that one. That's only 150 grand a week. Under her air needs a much better agent. <sighs> really? Unless it's 25 million. 150 a year. grand a week if you're under Herrera. No. Is no, grand. No, no, no. It's Free. grand. It's no, fine. No, no, no. She'd be getting that at Wolves. Maybe in two years' time. Not right now. Under Herrera, 150 grand is exactly... Actually, that's exactly how much he's worth. It's perfect. I don't see how you've got any issue with this. Because he's PSG, so there's a PSG tax, mm-hmm. and it's free transfer. So there's a free transfer tax. You paid no, you paid no transfer fee for me, so I'm getting that money. <laughs> yeah, 160 grand a week. Um, the Racing Post on their back page goes with match preview. Top Gunner can help his side hit final target. Valencia against Arsenal at 8 o'clock with a picture of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Anything you can do, we can do better. Uh, anything you can do. Spurs stage, stunning revival to set up Liverpool final. And the miracle of Anfield. All the, all the Anfield stuff suddenly feels a little bit dated. It's like, oh, we need more, we need more. Give us, we're going to be mainlining Liverpool stuff. It's like, actually, we need some Spurs stuff. Balls. The miracle of Anfield, audacity of Alexander Arnold. Van Dijk, this is just a start. Messi cried, then had drug test. Yeah, apparently they left Messi behind. Did you see that story? That was my, uh, the, the team bus. The Barcelona team bus left Lionel Messi behind because he couldn't piss. He needed to piss for the drug testers. So they were like, no, screw you, Messi. What did you do for us tonight? He was uh, too dehydrated after all the crying he did. Uh, yeah, that's, Messi that's cried. Harsh. Did he actually cry? Uh, apparently, uh, I, heard, I saw some match report or some report saying that the only sound you could hear in the Barcelona dressing room was the sobbing of Lionel Messi, ah. which, is really, <laughs> which is a really heartbreaking I mean, thought. come on, that's not true. It's just, it's, it's, that can't possibly be true. <laughs> Well, All you can hear is Lionel Messi crying. <laughs> Maybe he's got a very distinct sobbing tone. I tell you something, I lost all respect for him that night. <laughs> the um, Pochettino tears. Oh, Absolutely it's amazing! Fun. It was brilliant. And then, I don't know what's going on. Like they cut the interview short. Did they? I, I just saw the it, was like, it was thirty seconds. It's like one question. He burst out crying, and they're like, "Oh, good man, thanks very much." I'm like, "No, ask him another question or two. Why are you so emotional?" What, what was the precise moment that you decided to cry here, Maurizio? Come on. I, I, I loved that moment. It's, um, it, it's brilliant. The, the Lucas Moore moment as well. This is like their, their zenith, the, 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 big, the best moment of their, of their sporting lives, each of them. And um, they're just so open about the emotion they're feeling. It's, it's no, a beautiful sight to see. Absolutely, it is great. Um, that was, sorry, there was a Sopranos reference in there about losing all respect. It's, not, it's, I mean, it's bullshit. So. No, I, I got the sarcastic tone, but I'm only like eight episodes through the Sopranos. Feel, so. feel free to cry. Um, my... 
the it's now de rigueur for every commentary team to be on camera for the whole game, even when they're watching the, mm. the stuff. So um, Keith Andrews was obviously having a piss. <laughs> So he was missing for one of them, and then he miraculously appears for the uh, the winner. Brian Kerr is Brian Kerr a Spurs fan? I think he is. Yeah. So um, there's loads of f bombs in it. <laughs> it's just this beep 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 beep. Whereas all the English ones, um, there was a I don't know if you saw the BT one. Yeah. So, I mean, just to just to remind everybody, over the last eighteen months, Glenn Hoddle was at work for BT and had a very serious heart complaint and was rushed to hospital and it looked like he might die, and here he is back at the semi-finals of the Champions League in studio for Spurs and Rio Ferdinand, big, tall, Rio, still unbelievably athletic, looks like he can still play football, kind of pushes old, ailing Glenn Hoddle off screen to the point where Hoddle's kind of like this. I'm like, Rio, you just need to be careful. That man's like, you know, look at what's just happened, this is his beloved Spurs. You should be checking on him to make sure he's okay. He said like, Pfft. Hoddle's kind of, oh. I love the way they've owned that now at this point. There was almost a, a shame about how himself and Lineker celebrated Messi's goal last week. And this week, Rio Ferdinand sharing it off his own social media. This is the new trend, as you say. This is uh, how sporting directors now behave. But that was, that was anti-Liverpool. The Messi thing. They, about, they all hate Liverpool. Good point. So that Good was, point. I, I initially thought it was because also, of the greatness of Messi. Well, Lineker can celebrate a, a Barcelona win. No problems. That's totally legit. But also, Rio was like, yeah, it's great. Rio no that was what that was. Yeah, good point. I actually, I, I kind of, I, I, I guess I'm too much of a positive soul to, to think that. I, I just thought it was uh, Messi, Messi's greatness being celebrated know, on that you, occasion. You, the, the positivity bounced back off the cameras in Houston. Are you done? I'm done. All right, two more quick ones. It happened again! Is the back of the uh, Times Ireland edition this morning. Ajax 2, Spurs 3, and it's just the sheer desolation of the Ajax players in complete contrast with the shock that's on the faces of the rest of the Spurs players. Liverpool told their ball boys to hurry up. It's a good story. So they did. Well done. Um, I mean, don't all teams, when you're chasing a massive lead, tell your ball boys, is it not a pre-match meeting with the ball boys, you go, hey lads, maybe get the ball back into play pretty quickly here because we're uh, chasing the game. You'd like to think so, but it's, yeah. it's more doable in Champions League because of different regulations around the ball. The two balls. Yeah, there is one designated match ball in the Premier League and that's it. Yeah, as um, <laughs> Jim Beglin had it, they, they've been, was it, They've been running the two balls thing all night. What was his exact phrase? I can't remember, but he, he had it. He called it. Now it's Moore's miracle. Hat-trick hero hauls Spurs back from the brink to seal Champions League final against Liverpool. Anfield's unsung hero, ball boy's crucial role. He's not that unsung. He's on every bloody newspaper. He was on every single website yesterday. Graeme Souness immediately afterwards said he should get um, a season ticket next year and two tickets to the Champions League final. He's pretty sung. He's like the He's most sung hero of the Liverpool. I mean... I think we're singing about this guy a little bit too much. Yeah, screw you, boy. He was five yards away from Trent Alexander-Arnold. It was an accurate throw because it was an easy throw. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, the, the, the most... Well, it's not the most remarkable thing, but one of the remarkable angles to all this last night is that the comeback wasn't even predictable, as in the situation where Spurs would need to be in a position to make a ridiculous comeback wasn't even predicted. They were 1-0 down going into this leg. If you said at the end of the game, oh, there was a massive comeback, you're like, well, it was, there was only 1-0 was only after the first leg. It wasn't like Liverpool where a big comeback was required. To the point where, like, I saw Miguel Delaney writing yesterday, he did his piece on the comebacks, because yeah. there were due to be no more, more comebacks. Yeah, it was too late. Uh, which, which was uh, incredible. And, like, he does make really good points, like he was saying uh, yesterday, that um, it was a six-second leg comeback from two goals down or more since the start of 2017. That number is now seven, of course, after Spurs yesterday. And similarly, he said that's three more uh, three comebacks from three goals or more in the last two and a half years. That, of course, is now four. Both of those statistics stack up to more than two or three decades worth of Champions League comebacks. This is now the thing. Ever since PSG uh, fell to Barcelona a couple of years ago, this has just happened on a more regular basis. It has been incredible. And we were just saying before we came on air, I can't remember certainly a football competition, perhaps even a sporting competition, as good as this year's Champions League in terms of excitement. It has been Ridiculous. I just, it, nothing comes even close. I can't even think of anything that may even come close to this year's Champions League.